A New York woman falls short in her efforts to gain freedom from a Peruvian jail. Good evening. I'm Erica Pearson. In tonight for Richard Rose. A court in Lima, Peru this evening found Lori Berenson guilty for a second time of collaborating with leftist rebels. The 31-year-old activist was given a life sentence in 1996 for conspiring with terrorists. She has maintained her innocence and was recently granted a new trial. The court today cleared Berenson of being an active rebel militant, but found her guilty of helping plot an attack on Peru's Congress. Berenson was sentenced tonight to 20 years in prison. Mother Nature made her presence felt tonight after a day of oppressive heat and humidity. Strong thunderstorms rolled across our area. The storms caused numerous delays at local airports and a LIFE spokesperson said more than 2,500 customers lost power from the storms. Most of them were in the towns of Herricks, New Hyde Park and Manhasset. Crews were hoping to have power restored to those homes by midnight. And let's find out if we're out of the woods tonight with these storms. Meteorologist George Wright is at the map with a check on things. Any more thunder and lightning headed our way, George? No, Erica, the worst is over for the area tonight, but earlier this evening there was a heavy cell moving across northern Nassau County. Lots of thunderstorms earlier this evening up over Connecticut, but now it's a different story. All the storms have moved away and dissipated. A couple of widely scattered showers located over southwestern Connecticut and Nassau County right now. We might see a passing shower overnight tonight, but that's about it. Satellite picture shows a story. Lots of clouds heading our way. It'll be a mostly cloudy day tomorrow with more scattered showers and thunder showers. What fired the storms up today? Cool air crashing down into warm, humid air. Tomorrow, the cool air will be winning out. Temperatures will not get out of the 70s in the afternoon. 93 today over in Teterboro, 91 in Newark. The cool spot, West Hampton this afternoon, 78 degrees. Here's our forecast for tomorrow. Lots of clouds in the morning, 70. Scattered showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon, 75 at noon, 77 degrees on your way back home from work. More weather later in the show. Thanks, George. Investigators say a can of gasoline was the likely cause of a blaze that killed three firefighters over the weekend. Officials say evidence found at the scene supports that the theory was a can which was accidentally knocked over by two teenagers who started the fire. Firefighters Harry Ford and John Downing were killed when the building collapsed on them. Firefighter Brian Fahey died in the basement of the building. Funerals will be held on Long Island tomorrow for Ford and Fahey. Downing's funeral will be held in Queens on Friday. It's not a secret that energy and power are in high demand, especially on Long Island. But an energy summit which would incorporate your opinions will be held at the beginning of next month. This summer, it seems that energy and efficiency go hand in hand on Long Island. Energy is absolutely essential to our lives. Thank you. And, uh, it will be very costly if we have to build a lot of large plants. The Citizens Advisory Panel is a consumer watchdog group whose mission to find the best energy plan for residents island-wide. Now it seems that everyone from political officials to the Long Island Power Authority is making a conscientious and a collective effort to conserve power. We're here because we want all of the groups to participate in the discourse. Now the discourse is going to speak about energy conservation, what we need to do to conserve energy in our communities, the various alternatives, the options that we have to conserve. We need to have those ener energy generating stations here on Long Island at the right size, in the right place, and at the right time. We appreciate his leadership on this issue. It's an important issue for the present and also for the future of Long Island. The Public Energy Summit will be held here at Brookhaven Town Hall on July 12th. It'll run all day long. You can address all of your questions to the major players and the experts whose hopes are to design the ideal energy efficient model with you, the consumer, in mind. In Medford, Ji Young Min, News 55. Bayshore wants to become a village, and today residents in favor of this move joined together on the steps of Islip Town Hall. For Ed Flint, a Bayshore resident for 15 years, being a village benefits the people by putting them in charge of local issues. Zoning, you have decisions about planning, uh, you have control over um, highway maintenance, localized issues. You have the opportunity to provide for code enforcers at the local level. Uh, you have the opportunity um, uh, to choose uh, your elected officials in a smaller area. Becoming a village is a constitutional right as long as state procedure is followed. While village status typically improves services, it comes at a cost, about $250 more in taxes a year per household. Long Island area educators were officially honored today by the New York State Lottery as the Educators of the Week program came to a close.
The New York Lottery officially recognized Long Island area educators today at the fifth annual Educators of the Week reception. 31 of New York State's teachers and administrators were presented with their awards, and they have a lot to be proud of. Teaching is rewarding. Uh, each day I'm there with my students, I feel um, that I'm rewarded, and this is like, the icing on the cake. I'm terribly flattered. I mean, I work with a marvelous group of people, and to be singled out for this particular honor is, is especially meaningful to me. I put a lot of hard work in over the years and throughout a year, and it's really nice to be recognized for it. I sometimes think teachers are our unsung heroes. The educators were all nominated by WLNY TV viewers as part of an ongoing program to develop public awareness and appreciation for the accomplishments of New York State teachers. And the New York State Lottery was happy to be a part of honoring some of these unsung heroes. Um, this is a great celebration and recognition of all of WLNY Channel 55's Long Island Educators of the Week. We've gathered them all here together so that they can meet each other and so that we can again recognize the incredible excellence that they demonstrate every day in the classrooms of Long Island. The Educator of the Week program has now reached nine cities throughout New York State. And with Long Island pioneering the program, it has honored nearly 300 teachers this year. In Smithtown, Mary Kay Duffy, News 55. Well, three lucky honorees went home with $1,000 worth of computer equipment for their schools as a part of a lottery drawing. Straight ahead for you on News 55, a Texas woman confesses to a horrendous crime. And a graduation ceremony is held at a center in Roosevelt dedicated to children with special needs. The federal government has apparently deserted a civil rights case against the New York City Police Department. The probe was launched three years ago amid outrage over the torture of Abner Luima in a police station bathroom. Sources familiar with the case say talks over possible reform suddenly stopped months ago as the Bush administration assumed control of the Justice Department. However, a spokesman for the Civil Rights Division has described the case as ongoing. Suffolk OTB has opened another facility in Hopog today, which is sure to provide viewing excitement with its state-of-the-art equipment and bring a smile to the faces of Suffolk County taxpayers. The new Suffolk OTB is off and running. The Suffolk Regional Off-Track Betting Corporation held its grand opening celebration today of the new Suffolk OTB Racing Forum. The facility features state-of-the-art equipment, which customers are sure to enjoy. Three very large screens, one 8x10 and two 6x8, surrounded by 50-inch televisions. We have 108 private bedding carrels here, a separate smoking facility, and there will be a bar and restaurant. The Suffolk OTB has for years provided relief for Suffolk County taxpayers, and Suffolk County Executive Robert Gaffney hopes this facility continues to contribute to that bottom line. It's generated significant revenues. Every year it goes up, and this is a big increase this year. So the money generated by this helps the taxpayers of Suffolk County enormously. Since its inception, Suffolk OTB has generated over $160 million for Suffolk taxpayers. And with this new facility, that number is sure to rise. In Hopog, Mary Kay Duffy, News 55. A panel discussion on President Bush's faith-based initiatives was held in Hophock today. Local Congressman Felix Grucci assisted in bringing a White House spokesperson to Suffolk County, who talked about how the plan will benefit the community. Dealing with the president's faith-based initiative programs where we can help revive and renew the community spirit and help to promote a better quality of life for our people is, is a great initiative and I'm proud to be, uh, to be a member of a team that's helping to bring that to reality. Bush's faith-based program plans to address issues such as homelessness and hunger by working with nonprofit organizations. It was graduation day and a very special day today for some pre-K and kindergarten students at the Children's Learning Center at the United Cerebral Palsy Association at Nassau. Now over 30 children with mostly developmental disabilities will be moving on to schools and integrating with other kids. Some of the students will be moving into regular kindergarten or first grade classes. Yes, definitely mainstream with typical children in their home school district. Some of the students will then also um, have the opportunity to be in self-contained classrooms and then at the same time be mainstreamed into with typical children also. Many proud parents looked on during the highlight of today's ceremony, which was a song from the CLC Choir.
A shocking discovery for Texas authorities. They say a woman called police to her home and told them she killed her five children. According to authorities, they found four of the kids' bodies in a bedroom and another in a bathroom. They ranged in age from six months to seven years old. Police believe the children were drowned. The 36-year-old woman is said to be on medication for depression. Her husband, who was also called to the house this morning, is not a suspect. A dramatic rescue caught on police surveillance tape ended safely this weekend after a sheriff's deputy risked his own life to save a suicidal woman. Kansas Deputy Robert Burkhead grabbed the woman by her shirt as she jumped off of a 45-foot high bridge. Burkhead was carried over the edge as well, but managed to hang on to the railing with one hand. Burkhead says he was able to swing the woman over deep water before she lost her grip and fell. Another officer and a civilian were able to bring both the woman and the deputy to safety. Neither were seriously injured. More bloodshed continues to threaten the already shaky U.S. brokered ceasefire in the Mideast. Officials say an Israeli and a Palestinian were killed in the West Bank today. Each side is accusing the other of violating the ceasefire deal. The violence comes as security commanders meet to discuss the implementation of the truce, which took effect last week. When we return, some local kids are a part of a delegation preparing to head to the nation's capital for a worthy cause. Also, a national auto group comes up with a plan aimed at cutting down on the number of fatal car crashes caused by teen drivers. But first, here are tonight's winning lottery numbers. Stopping the day's business and financial news on Wall Street today, stocks finished the session higher across the board. The Dow Jones Industrial Average climbed 50.66 to close at 10,647. The Nasdaq Composite Index gained 38.58. Standard & Poor's 500 Stock Index rose 10.56. And the American Exchange Index was also up 3.58. New York voters should notice some improvements at the polling places during the next election. A statewide task force created by Governor George Pataki recommends a voter's bill of rights be posted at each polling location. The election modernization group is also seeking $25 million from the state's budget to help fund the replacement of voting machines. Pataki organized the task force, task force after Florida's contested presidential election. Some improvements are expected to be made by November. Some special kids are on their way to Washington, D.C. to help find a cure for diabetes. The Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation International has selected 200 children nationwide to participate in next week's JDRF Children's Congress 2001. The Children's Congress has aimed at getting more funding to find a cure for type 1 or juvenile diabetes. One of the children representing New York is 5-year-old Nicole Avery of Patchogue, Long Island. She got picked by writing a letter about how um, diabetes affects her life. And they picked her, and we're going to go down and ask Congress to support more funding towards a cure so she doesn't have to be on insulin every day. The Children's Congress will be held from June 24th through June 27th. The young delegates range in age from 2 to 17. Well, being sick is no fun at all, especially if you're a kid. But one new program may soften that reality where Long Island hospital stays are involved in a new Books on Tape program. A terrible car accident on Long Island some 29 years ago rendered Stephanie Kahn totally blind when she was only 28 years old. But the accident didn't take away her will to survive and to pass that spirit along to younger patients. I mean, I was really still thinking as a sighted person. And when I was introduced to a program that was for the blind, it was the talking book program for the blind, I immediately loved the recordings. Harry tried to argue back, but his words were drowned by a long... Nine-year-old Amanda can't really talk because she just had her tonsils removed, but her mom loves the books on tape idea. Not being able to speak and have to stay quiet, she can sit and listen to the tapes and help in her, recu in her recovery. Amanda writes that she prefers listening to the Harry Potter books on tape series, It's Better Than TV, adding that he's really nice and funny, but not good looking enough to be her boyfriend. Because it keeps the patients in touch with uh, life, but mostly because it uh, really represents a long-standing partnership between Stephanie and South Nassau Communities Hospital. 
She'd want me to tell you that her tonsils were almost as big as golf balls. In Oceanside, Ji Youngman, News 55. Well, the House of Representatives late tonight approved the $6.5 billion supplement to the federal budget. 